Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. I'm Paul Singh. I'm the founder of Dashboard.io. We're a benchmarking service for startups, uh, but our customers kind of see us as sort of a Bloomberg terminal for the private markets. Um, before this, I was a, a partner at 500 Startups. Uh, I was an EIR at Homeland Security. Um, did some time at AOL, Symantec, uh, CarMax, and I even had gas stations at one point. So uh, Dashboard actually is years old. So I think it's now, our first code commit was three years ago. Um, and it sort of took a back burner as we were building 500 startups. Um, and uh, over the last, so we started, I think, in the first code commit was in 2009. It went on the back burner. It started doing some stuff. I started building more stuff on top of it as we grew 500 startups. Um, and then at the end of March of 2013, we spun it off of 500 officially, brought the full-time team on. Um, today, 70 plus uh, other VCs and accelerators around the world use our platform every day. Um, we facilitate, um, on a bad month, like 300,000 interactions between funded people um, uh, um, around the world. And then now um, a couple thousand companies give us access to their public and private data. And we, um, in return, give them benchmarking services so we can tell them uh, whether they're burning cash too fast relative to their peers or getting too few unique visitors, things like that. We get a lot of data, a lot of data. And I, I'd be lying if I told you that we, we completely know how to um, parse it all right now. Um, but if you ask me that question again in about like a month, I think we'll have a much better answer for you. Uh, the tricky part is is really normalizing that data, right? Because a conversion a conversion for an e-commerce company is very different than a conversion for a B2B SaaS company, and we're kind of going through that normalization right now. I will say the macro trend is is that um, more and more companies are uh, selling to customers in niche verticals that. Personally, I would have never have thought about. So everything from like cricket players in Mumbai to moms in Kentucky. And so I, I think what we're really seeing from a macro um, picture is sort of the verticalization and regionalization of, of customer acquisition. The venture capital community, uh, at least for the last 50 years, has really uh, worked on this idea of asymmetric information, right? So VCs on the one side see a lot of deals, so they can kind of push for certain things, and founders on the other side have seen and talked to more and more angels and VCs, and so they can they can tweak other things. What we're really seeing now, and you know, Dashboard fits right in this, is that we're seeing the um, the playing field become more level. Uh, and with that being said, I think the VCs that are a little bit more forward thinking, that understand that this leveling of the playing field is going to happen, respond really well to us. Um, the ones that haven't yet gotten it, or maybe frankly don't want to get it uh, or have something to lose by that happening, um, frankly don't like us. That being said though, our direct real customers aren't really the, the VCs. Um, certainly we do have products for them. Um, the real customer for us is the LP. Um, and what that is, is an LP is a limited partner. Um, anytime you ever take money from a VC that's investing somebody else's money, that's an LP's money. Um, and these LPs are investors in other multiple funds and they love us because we give them a way to actually objectively measure um, venture firm A from venture firm B um, in a completely independent way of what the, uh, the, the, the partner of that VC firm might be telling them. Um, we haven't released any paid uh, versions yet. Um, we've spent the second quarter really doing our land grab, getting everybody on board. Um, Q3 right now where we're in, um, we're, we're building out the reporting interfaces and uh, um, ask me again in three months and I think we will have a better answer for you. You know, I'm not exactly sure that I'm not engaged with 500 startups anymore. The funny thing about venture capital is that it's sort of like being in the mob. Once you're in, you can't get out. Um, and, you know, I, I actually had the privilege of um, being one of the first three partners with Dave and Christine um, and have been involved for a long time. I've raised money, I've invested in hundreds of companies personally. And um, so, I, I, you know, from the day-to-day -day perspective, I'm not dealing with the issues. But, you know, like the founders that I invested in and the LPs that, you know, looked me in the eye before they gave me money, I still have to manage. Um, so I would say this. I would say that it's not any less frenetic uh, because the life of a, a founder, um, frankly, is really no different than the life of a, a, a VC. Um, we're doing a million things. We're thinking about customer acquisition. We're thinking about moving the product along. 
Um, so it's been interesting because I was a founder first, a VC, and then back to a founder. And um, I think what I've learned in the last three years now is that those roles aren't very different, actually. I would actually not trust a founder or a VC that's not busy and frenetic and crazy. Thank you.